I have a very short list of what I would consider the best musicals of all time, and believe me, it is very short. The problem with having favorites, though, is that your expectations increase and the critical eye becomes more piercing. Still, nothing is more rewarding than seeing one of your favorite shows and loving it for all it's worth, even with the simple, oh-so-minute flaws along the way. Hello and welcome to One Man's Opinion, where I review professional theater across Connecticut and New York. Today I am reviewing the national tour of My Fair Lady, directed by Bartlett Scher, which is currently making an East Coast run of the United States. If you haven't guessed from my intro, My Fair Lady is one of my favorite musicals and has been for, for decades. Ever since we watched the movie in class after reading the play it is based off of Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion back in 8th grade. Adapted by songwriting team Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe, My Fair Lady broke the mold on what a musical should be. There's no central love story, at least not in any traditional fashion. The characters are both relatable, yet at times incredibly difficult to like. They are, at times, extremely self-centered and naive. Uh, but somehow it all works. The irascible phonetician Professor Henry Higgins and the cockney flower girl Eliza Doolittle, currently played respectively by Laird McIntosh and Sheeran Ahmed, are perfect foils for each other. Against each other's own wishes, they evolve into something more than just a student-teacher relationship. Is it romantic? To a degree, but again, not in any traditional way, and not in any way that either of them would ever admit it. There are no soppy ballads or duets of romantic affection between them. The closest we get are Eliza's I Could Have Danced All Night and Higgins's I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face, neither of which are making any profound professions. The only real amorous song is Freddie Einsford Hill's On the Street Where You Live, played by Sam Simak, who gives Freddie a delightfully, pathetically dopey quality, not the traditional milk toast performance usually given. What gives My Fair Lady its strength is its power of wills between Eliza and Henry. We want them both to succeed in the first act, as Henry teaches Eliza how to speak proper English. But once their motivations as to why they do it come into a conflict in the second act, the question becomes, will they be able to reconcile before the curtain falls? This tour is of the production presented at Lincoln Center a couple years back. Some things have obviously changed. The Vivian Beaumont's theater stage is cavernous, and there is no way to make that set fit most stages. Michael Gergen's design has in part been scaled back, but the pièce de résistance, the Higgins home of 27A Wimpole Street, is beautifully intact. It's a marvelous set piece, gorgeously detailed with depth, brilliance, and motion, even though a painting fell off the wall during one transition. Kudos to the actors for doing the right thing and pausing for a beat to remove the piece off stage instead of leaving it there like nothing happened. Catherine Zuber's costumes are also immaculate, the creme being the costumes for the Ascot Derby horse races near the end of Act 1 and the ball at the top of Act 2. The reveal of Eliza's gown for the ball is perfect. I actually felt sorry for the young girl and her mother sitting in the 
row in front of me who had to leave presumably for the bathroom before the end of the act and missed the reveal. The music direction by John Bell dragged at times, particularly in Wouldn't It Be Loverly and I'm an Ordinary Man. Otherwise, the orchestra was great. It's too bad they had to scrap a staging from the original run where part of the orchestra plays on stage during the ball. But alas, that's one of the sacrifices that must be made for a national tour. The cast is overall adequate. Ahmed is a solid Eliza, though at times I felt that she had to compensate giving up her accent in order to sing in her head voice on the higher notes. McIntosh gives Higgins an almost Dr. Henry Frankenstein quality in the spirits of Colin Clive, the actor who played Frankenstein in the 1931 film. This is reinforced by the white lab coat he is wearing early in Act 1. It's a sometimes frenetic performance, a bit more running around than usual for Higgins, but still not necessarily a bad thing. The scene stealer, though, is Leslie Alexander, who is perfect as Henry's mother, Mrs. Higgins. She delightfully captures her wit and wry humor that gives away her intellect behind her demure facade. The unsung heroes of this production, though, are the ensemble, who are awesome, especially during the Ascot Gavotte, which may be my favorite number in a musical. It's a satirical look at the austere nature of Edwardian England, which is essentially a carryover of Victorian England, juxtaposed with a horse race. It is hysterical and so delightfully clever. I love it. Before signing off, I should speak briefly of the ending, which is altered from the original script. I won't give anything away as to what happens if you don't already know. I will say that it does address the sexism that exists in the patriarchal culture of its period. Unfortunately, due to the change of theater, the staging of the scene doesn't work as nicely as it did at the Vivian Beaumont, but hopefully the intended message is adequately interpreted by the audience. But that is one man's opinion of the national tour of My Fair Lady. Please leave your opinion in the comments below. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get information on upcoming tour dates and tickets. Like, share, and subscribe to be notified of future reviews. My next scheduled review is Long Wharf Theater's production of Dream House, which isn't for a couple weeks. So uh, maybe the people from MJ will get back to me with make updates before then. So we'll see. Either way, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.